Hi, my name is Sarah and I'm one of the two nurses here in the Home Enteral Nutrition or HEN Clinic in the Rochester Mayo, Clan, Mayo Clinic campus. Today we're going to go over site care for your feeding tube. Whether it be a PEG, a PEG, a G tube, a J tube, site care is the same for all of them. So today we're going to concentrate on, on, a, on a PEG tube in the stomach. First thing you need to do is obtain your supplies. You're going to need soap and water, you're going to need gauze or a washcloth, and you're going to need a new securement device. First thing to do is wash your hands. Either soap and water, um, if you happen to have hand sanitizer at home, that's fine too. Clean your hands first, get your soapy water. I happen to have um, soap in between two wet gauze here. Any soap that you normally use to shower with is fine to clean your site with. You do not have to buy anything special. First thing, lift up one end of your skin disc, the round piece here. Most important thing is to just get this all the way around. Take your time, doesn't matter which way you go. Just get that wet soapy gauze all the way around your site. And then you can discard that one. Next one is a rinse one. You're gonna be do the exact same thing. And apply that and get that underneath your skin disc. You're gonna bring that up and around. What we're doing right now is we're removing any soap residue that you have on your skin. So we're just gonna go ahead, get that off. Discard that one. Now we have a dry one. You basically just don't want any moisture underneath that skin disc, so you're gonna just kind of, um, you can either go all the way around or just pat that dry. While you're doing that, you wanna be looking for any redness underneath this skin disc. You also kinda of wanna be um, feeling around. Do you have any induration or swelling? Do you have any drainage? Do you have any bleeding? Anything like that you might wanna note down. The other thing we say with these is do not use any lotions, ointments, or creams underneath the skin disc. Um, it can cause the skin disc to actually slip. Um, we also say no gauze. If it's not leaking, not draining, everything looks good, we don't want any gauze just as a normal thing. If you are having some leakage um, and it happens to be getting on your t-shirt or whatnot, you can take a gauze, fold it in half, and lay it under the lower half of the skin disc. This will help you catch any drainage. Um, the other thing we're going to do is look at what marking you can see on your skin disc, right above the skin disc. We always say check the number at the top of the skin disc. That number should be about the same day after day, unless you have to move that due to weight loss um, or weight gain. Last thing we're going to do with your tube is we're actually going to turn and move the tube. We want to grab the skin disc and move this as one piece. We're going to do a complete rotation of the tube, bring that back around, and then what we're going to do is actually move the tube in and out. What we're doing is just making sure that your internal piece, either a bumper or a balloon, is not adhering into your stomach or intestinal wall. Um, so once that's done, we've now cleaned it, we've now turned it, um, and we've checked the site. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to actually secure the tube. Two types of securement devices that we use here um, in, the, in Rochester is the C-Pronet, which can either be pulled down over your head and, and shoulders or up over your legs and goes all the way around your abdomen and holds the tube in place that way. Second option is what is called a FlexiTrack. This is a tape product that you just apply to your abdomen, place the tubing into it, secure those two flaps, and your tube is now secured. Any questions, please contact your regular care provider.